Ever wondered what the real story was behind F1's banned V10 engines? And why they were taken off the grid for good? What was it about these beasts that not only redefined the sport, but also forced the FIA to shut them down forever? This is the story of F1's most legendary power unit, the V10. And the truth behind its ban is more shocking than you'd ever imagine. The V10 engines were revolutionary, and the people loved them. They were everything that the automobile industry needed. Relatively lightweight, tremendous power, just a mere force to be reckoned with. So, why were these engines considered revolutionary? The V10 engines were like the hero everyone had been waiting for. Teams were getting tired of the bulky V12s, the underwhelming V8s, and the unpredictable turbocharged V6s. Then came the V10s. Lightweight, powerful, and way more stable. They had that perfect mix of balance and brute force. And yeah, they screamed in all the right ways. Interestingly, these bad boys were not initially designed for use in cars. These engines were designed for use in airplanes and the military. But Destiny had different plans. In 1983, the V10 was used in an Alfa Romeo car, but it never made it to the tracks. Then came 1989, when Reynolds engineers decided to shake things up. They started experimenting, pushing boundaries, and what they ended up with wasn't just an engine, it was a game changer. The V10 was born, and it was finally ready to roar its way into Formula One, setting the stage for a whole new era. But if they were so great, why was the FIA so desperate to put them down? Why did the FIA want to ban these engines? The V10 engines were definitely exceptional. Their maximum RPM easily surpassed the 19,000 mark. And fans suspected them of producing over 1,000 horsepower unofficially. Engineers researched heavily to find the best possible materials to build these juggernauts. However, by 2005, the F1 had become a black hole for capital. Teams were investing a lot in research and development. These hammers didn't only have insane features, but the amount of money and resources that went into making them was also insane. The specially formulated fuel for these engines was a money drain that couldn't be ignored. Fuel companies designed specific fuels for specific V10 engines, which were of no use otherwise, but were costing millions, and only the teams with the deepest pockets could afford this technology. Established companies like Ferrari were throwing millions to excel. The financial imbalance became unfair for smaller teams that simply weren't able to afford such expenses. They were sidelined while the big teams flourished. The FIA feared that the sport would destroy itself if changes were not made. And what did they do? They basically turned the V10 engines into the F1 villain, blaming them for everything going wrong in the sport. And with top teams dropping over $250 million a year just on engineering alone, you can kind of see where they were coming from. The complaints weren't totally baseless, but the story's a bit more complicated than that. The expenditure wasn't the only problem. Safety was another aspect that came into play. With the intense power these monsters were generating, it had become almost impossible for the drivers to stay in complete control of the race cars. The average cornering speed had increased, and even the slightest miscalculation could cost drivers their lives. To build such power, the Screamers operated at an intensity so high that even minor issues in the engine could result in severe explosions. These explosions could be fatal for the drivers and pose a danger to others on the track or in the stands. When the FIA started getting more involved, they wanted to make one thing clear. They were running the show. Their mission? Level the playing field and stop F1 from turning into a rich kid's playground dominated by mega corporations. While all of this was happening within F1, the environmentally friendly political views were gaining popularity. People were beginning to take the issue of emissions and fuel consumption seriously. To keep the sport relevant to the masses, the FIA believed it would have to give it an eco-friendlier image. But how do you make a sport built on carbon emissions eco-friendly? Correct, you can't. But to make it seem sustainable, the F1 had to take some extreme measures. FIA decided that banning the V10 engines was the only way a new image could be built for F1. So, it was over. The glorious age of the Screamers had come to an end. 
After introducing rules to push the V-10s out for two years in 2005, the FIA finally announced the V-10s would be banned by 2006. But the story doesn't end there. While the official reason for banning the V-10s was to make F1 more eco-friendly, not everyone's buying it. In fact, many fans argue it backfired. The modern hybrid V6s might sound cleaner on paper, but they actually struggle to run efficiently on synthetic fuels, something the old-school V10s handled like a charm. Experts claim that the cost-cutting, which was the band's aim, never happened. Instead, the ban was followed by even more capital expenditure, as most teams now had to focus on engineering the newly mandated engines. This again caused an imbalance, as the large teams fueled their research and development with millions of dollars, while the smaller teams were once again sidelined. Several theories have been proposed regarding the controversial ban on V10s, one of which has garnered significant attention. Many believe that other factors might have influenced the ban, but the FIA had its ulterior motives. The FIA had been planning to make the F1 a laboratory for technology relevant to the road. So they had to introduce the V6 hybrid engines. They were quieter compared to the beautiful roars of the V10. They were way more complex than the real and raw screamers. Coincidentally, this turned out to be very beneficial for car makers like Honda, Mercedes, and Renault, as they could showcase their futuristic green technology. Some also believe the ban was carefully articulated and timed to help a few corporate giants gain an edge. This theory was further strengthened with the 2014 regulations change. Mercedes had been developing their hybrid technology years before and dominated the F1 for years after the change. However, the Screamer's story was bigger than its sad end. Fans around the world mourned the loss of the beast they had fallen in love with. And how could they not? These monsters built a legacy that no other could match. The V10 engine was the reason many fans around the world got into the sport. In that era, the sport's viewership increased notably, and it was no coincidence. The fans were emotionally connected to the raw, monstrous power of these engines. And the engine's sound, ah, those roars are still considered the most beautiful car screams in the history of the F1. The roars were what gave the engine the name Screamer. Fans are still filled with emotions when they talk about the era of the V10s. They believe it to be the golden age of F1. And how can they not? It was a period of all-out madness. The racing experience was completely raw, and legendary drivers emerged from it. Michael Schumacher, who won five titles consecutively from 2000 to 2004 at Ferrari, and Mika Hakkinen, who won two titles in 1998 and 1999, at McLaren Mercedes. What made these drivers special was their fearlessness. They weren't just drivers. These were gladiators who risked their lives every time they entered the tracks. Although the age of V10s ended, it paved the way for the future of F1 and engines in general. The Screamers are still regarded as the pinnacle of naturally aspirated internal combustion. The iconic engine broke all limits that had been set before it and it became something that all future engines aspired to become. The pneumatic valve spring technology, which was perfected in its time, was carried forward to its successor, the V8, and then to the hybrid turbo V6 engines. And it is still being used in F1 to this day. As metal valves would fail at that speed, this technology is what makes the 20,000 RPM possible. The lightweight intervals of the V10 engine were replicated in the V8s and hybrid V6s. These are what made the throttle response instantaneous. The chassis integration philosophy of the golden age was what helped the hybrid era become a reality. Before that, engines were mere parts of the car that were bolted on. Even after being gone for so long, those legendary engines remained the benchmark for newer technologies. When the hybrid turbo V6 engines were introduced, they were required to match the RPM and horsepower the V10s had been producing years earlier. The fact is that F1 would not be where it is technologically if it weren't for the innovations made in the V10 era. The hybrid engines of today and the V10 engines cannot stand equal. Why? The hybrid V6 engines are undoubtedly efficient. 
generating 1,050 horsepower, which surpasses the official peak of the V10 by 100 horsepower. They consume 30% less fuel than the V10s. And they are even faster, with a lap time 10 seconds less than their ancestors. And while this has helped them earn respect among the fans, they can't seem to get the fans to love them. So what is it that makes fans, drivers, and teams still love the V10s so much? It's the feeling. While the hybrid V6s may be more effective, they miss the very essence of the sport. There are no emotions to it. While the drivers once relied on instinct in taming the car, which was running wild, the modern green engines have made the sport about smoothness and calculations. Can the V10s come back now? If the unthinkable happens, the fans will go mad to start with. With even more advanced tire and aerodynamic technologies now available, lap records will continue to drop even lower. The modern tech might completely go out of use. But an even crazier possibility is if electric technology were integrated into the V10 engines, the V10s would then be on a completely different level. However, the chances of it happening are near zero. The FIA can bring them back, but they never will. The amount of money spent to get the F1 to its current position is too much to be wasted. The screamers still keep the newest engines on their toes. The legacy they have left behind molds the innovations even 20 years after their banishment. Their reputation and acceptance are still unmatched. But the wild beast must be left sleeping. As if it were to wake up now, it would tear down whatever came against it. We've got plenty more wild car stories coming your way, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And hey, drop your thoughts about the crazy journey of the V10 engines in the comments. We'd love to hear what you think. Catch you in the next one.